Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rory McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. During his upcoming visit to Portugal for World Youth Day, Pope Francis will make a visit to the International Marian Sanctuary of Our Lady of Fatima to pray for an end to the war in Ukraine. The Holy Father will travel to the Marian Shrine on the 5th of August. It was in May in 2017 that he first visited the sanctuary to canonise Blessed Francisco and Jacinta Marto, two of the young visionaries who witnessed the apparition of Our Lady. The Pope's decision to return to the Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima coincides with his intention to address the war in Ukraine and numerous forgotten conflicts worldwide. Meanwhile, the rector of the Fatima Shrine has urged the faithful to join together in prayer with the Holy Father during his visit. Father Carlos Cabecinas said the preparations to welcome the pontiff are well underway. On Thursday, the Holy See published the logo, motto and itinerary of the Holy Father's upcoming apostolic visit to Mongolia. The Pope's 43rd international apostolic journey will take him to the landlocked East Asian country from August the 31st to September the 4th. The motto of his journey is Hoping Together. The Holy See Press Office said that this motto emphasises the importance of bilateral cooperation between the Holy See and Mongolia. The logo sports the traditional tent used by nomads in the Central Asian steppes in the colours of the Vatican flag, with that being surrounded by an outline of the country drawn in red and blue. On the right of the tent is a cross, Two vertical inscriptions in the traditional Mongolian language complete the design. The Holy Father will address political authorities and Catholic Church representatives during the historic visit. He will also participate in an ecumenical and interreligious meeting. On Thursday, two rockets were fired from southern Lebanon toward Israel, sparking Israeli military operations across the border. One of the rockets fell in Lebanon, while the other fell near a disputed area at their shared border. The Israeli Defence Forces responded by attacking the launch site for the missiles with airstrikes. The incident occurred amid heightened Israeli-Arab tensions, following Israel's heaviest military operation in decades this week in the occupied West Bank. The military operation targeted the Jenin refugee camp, which is claimed to host Hamas militants. According to reports, the offensive claimed the lives of 12 Palestinians and destroyed or damaged 80% of the camp's homes. North Carolina Democratic Governor Roy Cooper vetoed measures that would have outlawed doctors from performing sex change procedures on children suffering from gender dysphoria and prevented boys from competing in girls' sporting competitions. Cooper announced on Wednesday that he vetoed House Bill 574, also known as the Fairness in Women's Sports Act, and House Bill 808, which is known as the Act to Prohibit Gender Transition Procedures for Minors. He also vetoed a bill that restricts gender issues being discussed in schools. The governor defended his veto by claiming that Republicans were presenting a triple threat of political cultural warfare. There is a chance that the Republican-controlled state legislature might challenge these vetoes. In Germany, the Parliament has voted down two bills with provisions to regulate the illegal ban on assisted suicide and euthanasia, a bill allowing assisted dying if the patient is an adult and knows what to expect, was rejected by the Bundestag on Thursday, with 363 voting against it and 304 in favour of the legislation. A second bill on euthanasia was also voted down. The legislation wanted euthanasia to no longer fall under criminal law. It was also rejected by lawmakers, with 375 voting against and 287 casting their votes in favour. The debate on euthanasia regulation came up after the Constitutional Court of the country annulled euthanasia paragraph 217 in 2020. The court said it violated the personal rights of citizens, including the right to decide when to die. Euthanasia can be an extremely sensitive topic in Germany, in part as it evokes memories of the killings of thousands of physically and mentally challenged people by the Nazis. In the United Kingdom, the High Court has ruled that the dismissal of a Christian parent governor who questioned the sex education programme in her child's primary school was unlawful. The mother was granted anonymity by the High Court in order to protect her children. The woman hailing from the English town of Gateshead will now be reinstated in her job. She was removed for pointing out legal errors in its relationships and sex education policy. She also challenged lesson plans which included the use of the gender-bred person diagram 
which promotes the gender agenda. The mother also raised objections to children being encouraged to question their own gender identity without the knowledge of their parents. In the US state of Oklahoma, the Department of Health has launched a website containing resources for expectant mothers, parents and families. The department said in a press release that the resources were pro-life and pro-woman. The web portal contains information on pregnancy, adoption, parenting and financial assistance. It was hailed by Governor Kevin Stitt, who said that each child is a gift from God. He said that while pregnancy can be a confusing and trying time without support, the launch of the resource reflects a commitment to uplift and empower expectant mothers in the state. According to Commissioner of Health Keith Reid, the vision for the website is to lead the state to prosperity through health. In Oklahoma, abortion is banned except in cases of rape or incest, or if the health of the mother is in serious jeopardy. A movie based on the life of a former Homeland Security agent who undertakes a mission to rescue children from sex traffickers is now the number one movie in the United States. Angel Studios' Sound of Freedom has overtaken Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny to land in the top slot at the box office. The movie grossed $14.2 million on the 4th of July national holiday. Movie critics say the film could reach $20 million in gross sales by the end of the week. In the movie, the Passion of the Christ actor Jim Caviezel appears as federal agent Tim Ballard, who worked with the Child Crimes Unit for 12 years, when he rescues a seven-year-old boy who was kidnapped with his sister by traffickers. The child asks him to rescue his sister. The agent then embarks on his life mission to rescue children from traffickers. In the United States, a report released by the Heritage Foundation's Education Department has found that teacher absenteeism rates can cause significant learning loss to students. The research and educational institution revealed that teacher absenteeism has been growing over the past three years. The rates were slightly higher in schools with a high minority student population. The phenomenon was seen among high school teachers and teachers of students with special needs in particular. The study also revealed that schools with large populations of students from low-income families were more likely to have teachers who are chronically absent. It concluded that as well as significant learning loss, teacher absenteeism can also have negative impacts on the non-academic and behavioural outcomes of students. The Auxiliary Bishop of Managua, Silvio Baez, has said that Bishop Rolando Alvarez will not leave Nicaragua unless the Pope orders him to do so. This comes after negotiations between the Church and the Daniel Ortega regime seeking the release and deportation of the prelate failed. A Nicaraguan human rights activist had said that the regime intended to exile Alvarez to Rome. It was on the 10th of February that Bishop Alvarez was sentenced to 26 years in jail on trumped-up charges of sedition. Living in exile in Miami in the United States, Bishop Baez said on social media that he knew Bishop Alvarez would not go back on a conscience decision that he has made to stay in the country. He added that he too would have done the same, although he was forced to leave Nicaragua in obedience to the Holy Father. Bishop Baez promised to continue denouncing the crimes committed by the Nicaraguan regime and to keep praying for the release of Bishop Alvarez. The auxiliary has been in exile in the United States since April in 2019. The Australian government of Anthony Albanese will no longer force state-run hospitals to perform abortions if they wish to receive federal funding. The Prime Minister made it clear that although public hospitals receive funding from the Commonwealth, it is up to the states to decide what services are offered. However, Assistant Minister Brittany Lauga of Queensland has said that she wants the Prime Minister to reconsider the proposal regarding public hospital funding. The international non-governmental organization Human Rights Watch has said in a report that Russian and Ukrainian forces have employed cluster munitions that have killed Ukrainian civilians. This comes as the United States considers whether to respond to the Ukrainian government's request for weapons. The agency has asked the United States not to provide weapons and urged Russia and Ukraine to stop deploying them. More than 120 countries have signed an international treaty banning cluster bombs which typically scatter many smaller explosives over a large area that can kill or maim civilians months or even years later. However, Russia, Ukraine and the United States have declined to sign the treaty. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again next time for more. But do remember you can always visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.